One of the things that I want to talk about is lock time. Okay, so lock time is that moment in time from when the release breaks until your cams ramp up and they take that arrow from your face. So that's lock time. It's the time between when the release breaks and when that arrow is actually clearing the arrow rest. So a lot of things factor into this, but here's what's important for you to know about lock time. With lock time, the longer that that arrow has the ability to remain on the string, the longer any of your form flaws or your breakdowns in technique are going to start to show up downrange. So there's a few things that affect lock time. Obviously, one of the critical things is gonna be your cam's design and where that power curve breaks over, also the amount of valley that you have and your let off. So if you think about like a recurve shooter who as they pull back, that string gets heavier and heavier, or the poundage gets heavier and heavier as they're drawing back that string. So by the time they're at full draw, they're holding their peak weight. And when they let go, that arrow immediately has that full force to take that away from them. Now with a compound bow, because you have let off and you also have a valley, so let off is when that cam breaks over and you're holding it at full draw, how much of your total weight are you holding? So if you've got a 90% cam shooting 70 pounds, you're only gonna hold 10%, so you're only holding seven pounds. And it's gonna take a little bit of time for that cam to ramp up and then fully launch that arrow out of that cycle. The lower your let off, the quicker that cam is gonna take that arrow through the bow and through the system. So there's pros and cons to both when it comes to lock time. The pro is gonna be if you have a longer lock time or a higher let off with a higher valley, it's certainly much easier to hold it back and to wait on a shot, which in a hunting situation is critical. However, in a target situation, or especially when you're working on accuracy and you're working on technique, you're gonna find out that if you have a longer lock time, you have more time to have mistakes in your technique, your grip, your release hand, the way it comes out away from your face. So, so many of the things in School to Knock are in there because they're actually teaching you ways to make sure that your form, your technique, and your arrow flight is true from the break of the release until the arrow is actually clearing that front rest and on the way to the target. Now, another thing that affects lock time is the weight of your arrow. So if you're shooting a heavier arrow, for example, right now for my indoor training, I'm actually shooting a heavier arrow and I do have a lighter arrow, but I'm gonna let you take a little look right here at when I make this shot, you can kind of hear and you can kind of see that this will take a little bit longer for this big heavier arrow to get through the system. So one of the things I love about that is if I can become deadly accurate with an arrow that's taking longer to get through my system, then honestly, I should be able to be more accurate with an arrow that's getting out of that system quicker. So let's take a look at this really heavy arrow. This is a 2315 with uh, 200 grains total in the front. Okay, now let's see if you can hear the difference in this arrow going through the bow. Much faster, definitely getting through the system faster. So if you have a slower arrow and you're working on perfect shots, making super clean shots, 
and your lefts and rights and your highs and lows are good with that slower arrow, they should be even better with another arrow that is getting through that system faster. Couple points I wanna end with when it comes to lock time and making sure your arrows are absolutely dead accurate down range. It's gonna be a couple things that you critically have to focus on. Follow through, it's gonna be super important. So during that time when this release clicks and those cams are ramping up, for me, it takes about 13 thousandths of a second for that arrow to still clear my face, let alone that other four thousandths of a second for it to clear my bow. So any mistakes that I'm making, if I'm coming out and away from my face, if I'm dropping down to watch the arrow, those are gonna immediately show up down range. And the slower your lock time, the more it'll be magnified. The other thing is gonna be front hand position and keeping that front hand relaxed. And as that shot breaks, just letting that natural recoil of the bow. And that's also why I talk about keeping that front elbow soft. So as that bow goes off, you're able to have a nice little straightforward movement to the target to allow that arrow to pass through the system without any type of alteration, without any type of torque in the system or misalignment of the string thrusting that arrow through due to an improper follow through. So if you've ever considered shooting indoor arrows that are a little bit bigger, a little bit slower, I think what you'll find is if you can practice and put forth the effort to be accurate with a slower arrow, then you're gonna be that much more accurate with a faster arrow that's getting through the system quicker.